Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, May 5th, um, 2014. Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Happy Cinco de Mayo to all uh, Mexican listeners and uh, white people and everybody else who just wants to go out and get shit-faced tonight uh, for whatever reason. So you have an excuse tomorrow when you drag an ass. Yeah, I notice you're uh, not up to your level of productivity that we're used to here at Cogswell Cogs. And you'd be like, well, fuck you. I went out and I celebrated last night. What's the matter? You don't like Mexicans? There you go. It's one of the few times a white person can use the race card. Just slam that fucker right down. Are you against Mexico? Well, all right then. Kindly remove yourself from my cubicle area. All right? I got drunk last night for America. <laughs> um, oh, here's one for you. Last night I was hanging out with Jason Lawhead. You know, obviously race has been a huge fucking... It's been a huge topic of uh, interest over the last couple of days. Um, I was over uh, Jason Lawhead's uh, place. He's got this apartment building. He's got a really cool rooftop. And, uh, you know, I get to see L.A., get to see the helicopters fucking with their spotlights down on some poor bastard trying to run away. I don't know how I feel about police helicopters out here or just in general. I mean, I'm all for catching the bad guys, but it does kind of get to the point of like, you know, how, how much fucking help do you need here? You guys already have, you know, you guys are all on the same team. You all have uniforms. Okay. It's like 900 cop cars to one cop car. You're all on the radio. Oh, he just made a right on fucking sunset. You need a helicopter too? Lighten the guy up? Jesus Christ. How long would Bonnie and Clyde last in this day and age? You couldn't fucking get away with it. What am I defending right now? Homicidal maniacs? I guess I am. There's just something about like, you know, it's like when you watch a cowboy and Indian movie. You, you got to root for the underdog. You go, you go for the Indians. I guess the Native Americans. Is that what they call them now? Am I in trouble? Do I have to apologize? Um, yeah, you always root for the fucking underdogs. That's how I look at it. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. So anyway, so we're up on this roof. And um, as we walk up on the roof, there's already some people partying up there. Um, and they're celebrating Cinco de Mayo. Mostly Mexican people, I think, up there playing the music and all that shit. Blah, 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 blah. Everything's fine. So me and Lawhead... And a bunch of white guys, we go up there, and then we sit down on these other chairs, and we start smoking cigars. And then all of a sudden, one of the dudes comes walking over. He'd been drinking, and they had, like, you know, these, these potted plant bushes. And the dude's walking over to an area where there's no exit, and then he walks behind the bushes. And we're like, is he going to piss over there? So one of the guys that we're with goes, he's like, yo, yo, dude, that's not a bathroom, man. That's not a bathroom. And the guy stayed down there for a minute. So then we go back to talking, smoking our cigars. And then I hear him talking to his friends. Hey, yo, bro, that's not a bathroom. And then I hear, oh, we got your back. We got your back, right? <laughs> I'm sitting there going, oh, God, here we go. And here we go. And uh, so then I'm thinking, like, maybe he wasn't pissing. So that's why he's mad. And then he's looking at us going, like, all oh, those white guys already didn't like us up here with our music. And now he assumes just because I walked behind these bushes that I was taking a fucking piss. And maybe I was just looking down over the side of the building to see if my friend was showing up, right? So that's what I'm thinking is playing out in my head. So long story short, he's fucking, you know, a couple of mean mugging looks over our way. And uh, so I'm already thinking in my head how to verbally talk the whole situation down. Basically doing the exact opposite of what a bouncer does. You know, where they, they're security, but they always escalate the situation. Remember that story I told a while back where I saw two guys almost got into a fight and the bouncers fucking break them up. And they're like, hey, 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 well, you know what's going on here? And this guy goes, well, this guy, and he kind of put his hand on the bouncer's shoulder and the bouncer goes, okay, first of all, don't touch me. And he immediately fucking escalated it. Now, rather than he was coming over to, to, to defuse it, he was escalating it. So I was sitting there going like, all right, how the fuck am I going to fucking convey to them honest mistake if this dude wasn't pissing you know i mean what the fuck are we supposed to think you're drinking you're stumbling over you walk behind bushes on the roof you know to me that is classic 
I'm drunk and I'm going to piss the, the, the first place I can find, you know, no cover. I mean, cover, I should say. Nobody can see me is what I should say. So um, long story short, uh, this black dude comes over who's gay. This is like a fucking reality show, you know, where they get, well, all we need is an Asian guy and somebody with a sassy attitude. And I think I have a hit show here, you know. Um, so he comes over and he's like, yeah, sorry. I don't even know he's gay, but he has like the gay accent, which I guess is homophobic to say, but he had an effeminate accent. I assumed he was gay. Not saying he can't get married and someday get divorced and lose half his shit. He has the right to do that. He has a right to do everything straight people do, even the dumb shit. All right. Did I cover my tracks? So he comes over. And he goes, hey, man, sorry about blah, blah, blah. He goes into apology mode, and I go into, immediately into apology mode. And I just say, hey, man, it's an honest mistake. We thought he was uh, taking a piss. I didn't know, blah, 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 blah. And then in the end, when he walks away, my other buddy goes, no, I could hear him pissing. So I don't know what the fuck happened. So then I guess the roof is really fucking thin. And, you know, they're playing music, dancing and shit. And then, like, the owner came up, and then a little bit later, this security person came up. And I'm thinking the whole fucking time, these guys, these Mexican dudes think that we called those people. That these white guys showed up like, oh, what are they doing up on our roof? And that was completely not the case. And I was sitting there. And of course, because I'm a Hollywood phony, rather than actually giving into the tension of it, I was actually thinking like, hey, this would be a really good scene in a script. <laughs> Just a complete misunderstanding and uh i still i still think it's a comedy i don't think it's more like crash i think it's a comedy because they were all young and in shape and we were a bunch of old white guys smoking cigars so that would be a funny fight there would definitely be like you know the dual headlock shit going on with the shirt coming up and the ass crack coming out you know what a real fight looks like it's never pretty you know by the way who, who saw the mayweather fight anybody um, I actually didn't see it. I heard it was, uh, it was actually a good fight. I just have so much faith in Mayweather as a, as a fighter that I don't order his fights because he just wins every fucking time, and, but he never knocks him out. So I just watch him peppering the guy, you know, kind of dances around the first couple of rounds. Ah, is that what you're doing? Ah, you can try to do that? Okay. Beep, beep, boop, 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 beep. I got to fucking three rounds. I got to get a man. I fucking it. Fucking old guy starts yelling. <laughs> I don't know. He landed more power shots than the other fucking guy. I don't know. I think. Do you think he's going to get out? He's got three more fights. He's three more. I, I'm actually worried about Mayweather. I can't tell. I know he's a smart guy, but I can't tell if he understands money or if that's all just a show. You know what I mean? Anytime you see a guy in a field where age is a factor, like by the time you hit 40 and they have like f like fucking an airport hangar of all white cars, you know what I mean? You just start seeing that. Or like once you buy the Tiger, what's some other dumb shit? You have your own water park in your backyard. I mean, you just can't sustain that. You literally start living... A lifestyle where it's like the only way I can afford this is if, is if I'm champion of the boxing world. You know, eventually you're going to be 50. And unless you're Bernard Hopkins, I mean, you're, you're not, you're not going to be the champ anymore. And now you got a tiger next to a water park next to fucking nine white Bentleys. And I don't know. I don't know. You got to get like that. You got to get the, uh, you got to get the outside the business money. You know what I mean? I'm literally drawing a half a circle right now, as I'm saying, outside the business money. I'm trying to think of a good example of it. I would say 50 cent with this fucking vitamin water. Brilliant. That's fucking brilliant. That's like a fucking hooker with, who, who fucking takes her hooker money and then fucking buys an apartment building. So you can get underneath, out from underneath your pimp. Because that's really kind of what show business is. It's funny. You come into this business, you think you're the pimp, and then... About, I don't know, for me, about 15 years in, you're like, oh, wait a minute. I'm the guy walking the block. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I need to somehow try and make money outside of this business because I can only shake my ass for so long before another young redhead's going to be coming along and then I'm finished, right? So I need, I need to go buy a whorehouse, which is a fucking comedy club. I don't know what I need to do, but I got to start making money outside of this business because I'll be fucked if I'm going to be some old bald guy in a fucking wrinkled tuxedo on a cruise cruise ship, you know, I'll be so old at that point. Not only will I be telling jokes, I'll, I'll do, be also kind of singing classic songs from the American songbook, you know. You know, what's up with the president? You know, we got to get back on budget. I think you need to go back to fucking Arkansas. People laugh, and then I'll be like, all right, here we go. The summer wind, but okay, blow it in from across the sea. And I do a big thing like, 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 you know, like a, a fucking, one of those chick, those whores on fucking prices, right? A new car! And they do that little swing with their hand, like as if you can't see the fucking car. That's what I would be doing. Across the sea. And I would just, like, there it is. We're out on a boat. You are a fat fuck. You know? Fucking dance with me. We'll go to the casino. You know what I like about cruise ships? I don't like how they decide when you fucking eat. You know, like all of a sudden I joined this guy's Navy. I did one cruise ship, and that's the thing that I hated the most, aside from the fact that you couldn't get away from the crowd. Hey, good show last night. Saw you last night. Hey, just want to tell you, I think you did about the firehouse. Fuck off. It's over. Hey, I liked your shorts yesterday. Those shorts you wore. How would you like to hear that all fucking day? It's not their fault. How do you come up with your material? I actually thought about jumping overboard like half the fucking time, and I am terrified of the ocean. But I thought the water would be cold enough that hypothermia would get me before I'd get eaten by a fucking shark. And even then, by then, I'd be so fucking numb. You know? Maybe it wouldn't hurt. I don't know. What, am I, what was I talking about? Oh, we're talking about race. We're talking about racial issues. Um, so this week, i got to try to remember what the fuck happened. Oh, okay. The first one that happened literally happened the day I put up the podcast. And, um, you know, it's a fucking pet peeve of mine is on Twitter. All right. When some cunt will fucking send me a tweet, male or female cunt. Okay. Equal, equal opportunity. Um, we'll say like, uh, Hey Bill, did you see this thing about Donald Sterling on the Clippers? And then they just write thoughts. Like, I'm just supposed to just start fucking, oh, well, well, shit, let me just take time out of my fucking day. You know? Hey, talk about uh, this fucking thing. And you fucking talk about it. I talk to you once a week on Monday. Okay? These fucking Twitter cunts drive me nuts. Thoughts? Hmm? Thoughts? Um, anyway, sorry. I'm really being a cunt today, but I, I just, uh, I can't help it. It's, it's who I am. So anyways, yeah, uh, I love that thought. What, what, what could your thought fucking possibly be other than like, yeah, that was horrific. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. It's not like I don't have a bit on it, but I'm not going to do it on the podcast. But uh, I can't tell you this, though. I, I didn't understand what Mark Cuban was talking about where they were saying where he gave the slippery slope. The slippery slope thing there. There's always somebody like whenever you're like, uh, you know, hey, this guy says he loves Hitler. We got to get rid of them. And then there's always that, well, you know, that's a slippery slope. I mean, you know, you start with this guy, you know, where do you draw the line? Uh, how about, you know, you draw the line at uh, racist with fucked up mustaches. How about we draw? It's pretty a clear and present line. Like, I don't understand where the slippery slope. It's like if you're going to fire an owner for being overtly racist, what next? You don't like my shirt? <laughs> Ah, uh, fuck. I, I mean, I don't... I, I actually, in defense of him, I I read the first... Oh, I was, yeah, this is in defense of him. I just Googled it, and then I looked it up. And I saw these sense kind of retracted it. Um, And all I have here is that the outspoken billionaire said it was a slippery slope to suggest that Sterling should be forced out as owner over comments made in the privacy of his home. Um, Yeah, I mean, well, that's taken out of context, but I, I don't know... He said what Donald said was wrong. It was abhorrent. I don't even know what that word means. It must be bad because whore is in there. Abhorrent. 
Uh, there's no place for racism in the N NBA, any business I'm associated with. But at the same time, that's a decision that I make. I guess he's saying I make a decision not to be racist. Uh, I think you've got to be very, very careful when you start making blanket statements about what people say and think as opposed to what they do. It's a very, very slippery slope. So what is, what is he saying there? I don't get it. Is he saying that, all right, this guy says racist shit. Um in his personal life, but during the day, his business is made, he has 11 employees on his, players on his team, and 10 of them are African-American. So despite what he says on the phone, <laughs> if everybody hired the way this guy did, I mean, that's a higher than 90% African-American. Shit, white people would be out of jobs. Uh, I don't know what he's saying there. I don't understand where the slippery slope is, but um, I don't know. I mean, what, what are you going to do? The guy said what he fucking said, and I understand that it was a private conversation, but he was dumb enough to do it over the phone. He, he's just – and by dumb enough, I'm not saying that you, he should have just said it without being on the phone. I, I'm, I know what he said was wrong, but the thing is, is every fucking move he made – is his own fucking fault. That's his own fault. His own fucking fault that you would say something like that over the fucking phone to a woman who's acting like she's into you, who's 50 years younger than you. You're a fucking moron. It was unbelievably reckless, and uh, I'm glad he did it because, uh, I don't know, it's just fucked up. It's just fucking, you know, I don't know. I don't understand. Like I, I would, I would understand that guy if that guy lived in the middle of fucking nowhere, and he lived around all fucking white people, and he was eighty years old. I mean, that's a layup. I mean, shit. He just, yeah, that's obviously how he's gonna fucking think. This guy was born in nineteen thirty something, you know, and he was raised by people who were born in like the turn of the fucking century, and had Harry Truman for a president, who was one of the most biggest fucking racists ever, right? Was that his first fucking name? I don't know. Um, so anyways, I mean, yeah, what, what the fuck you think he's going to be thought? I mean, this guy got raised by racists and then, and then he didn't fucking travel, but this guy actually traveled. Okay. That's, that's, that's the one that I don't get. I don't get when you finally have interaction and you actually have examples and it's a specific person that you now know that you can still think that way. Um, and then the, the, the fucking phone message is hilarious because he's literally talking to somebody who's half of what – was she half uh, black, half uh, Latino, and he's literally trashing black people to her. And as she's getting offended, he's sitting there going like, oh, you're mean. Oh, don't you understand how your words hurt me? <laughs> <laughs> and as fucking awful as it was, I would love to have that level of money that you're that fucking just so wrapped up in yourself that you don't even realize you're hurting people and you're actually you're you're playing the victim yourself. I don't know. So now it's actually I don't think he's going to try and sell the team, which is going to be fascinating as they try and force this guy out, but I think they should be able to do it because he's fucking with the whole image of the league. You know? I don't know. Whenever, whenever shit like this comes out, it, it always bugs me because then everybody gets to act like holier than thou because they didn't get caught saying anything fucked up. You know what I mean? I don't know. I think people say fucked up shit. I think everybody says fucked up shit. And I think people think fucked up shit and they're just smart enough to not say it out loud. And I don't even think that it makes you a racist. You just think, you just see, you, you can't, you can't fucking help it. You just fucking, you're a product of how you grew up. You're part of experience. And every, you know what it is? Everybody has fear. So fear will drive you into thinking the worst of somebody if you're in a fearful situation. Like I used to do a bit in my act how everybody's racist at night. And almost like you have to be so you can get home. You have to think the worst of people so you're not that fucking idiot that just walks into a wood chipper. Like, yeah, I'll help you start it. <laughs> fucking go over there and get knocked over the head. And thrown in it. And then that's the worst. Then the next day, everybody's like, oh, it's awful that it happened. But Jesus, I mean, what, what was this guy thinking? So, um, 
I don't know, but I got to commend all the Clipper players for actually still going out and playing because uh, I don't know that I would have. You know, I mean, you got to feel like you just got to feel like you're, you're. I've worked for some club owners that have been absolute dicks, and I still had a couple of, of fucking shows left, and I wanted to like burn down the club and then choke the guy to death and throw him on the fucking ashes. Like I felt that, and still had to trudge through the show, and there was no no racism involved. There wasn't this negative thing that affected my life every fucking day, and then this guy actually personified it. It was just a guy being a dick, and I still had to go up there and entertain his fucking, the people that were coming there, because at that point it wasn't a draw, so they were basically coming to the club. And I wanted them to have a bad experience because I wanted this person to go out of business. I, I, I can only relate to it at that half a percent level, so I can't imagine what the fuck they were going through. But uh, it's going to, I have to tell you, on a selfish level, it's going to be really entertaining to watch this guy fight the fucking NBA um, and not try and lose his team. I mean, Jesus Christ, what a fucking situation. It's just like, dude, just be a fucking man now and just walk away. You're going to drag down everybody with you, one of those guys, you know? I don't know. It's just what he did then causes everybody else to, well, what about the other owners and all of that type of shit? It's just, he fucked up. He fucked up. He is fucked up. He got caught a bunch of times, evidently doing other shit, and he never changed his fucking ways. His fucking chickens came home to roost. And, uh, you know, and what's, what's his big penalty? He sells it and has a billion dollars. You know? Just go buy a yacht. Just drive out in the ocean and scream all your racist shit. You know, you can be free out there. Free to do what you want. I don't know. Did that make any fucking sense? You know what it was? I had to fucking steer around all the, all the funny areas where I'm doing the bit on it. <laughs> oh, and then also, the, uh, the Boston Bruins and the Montreal Canadiens started another classic, classic playoff series. Uh, the first game went to overtime. The fucking Canadians won. And uh, then uh, they had game two. Looked like they had it all wrapped up, and the Bruins came back, came storming back to steal game two. So it's one-to-one. Two unbelievable, like, I'd put those games up against any fucking games in the, in the history of that series. But unfortunately, P.K. Subban scored the goal in overtime in game one, and then, like, uh, a couple of years ago, when that other uh, African-American player scored an overtime goal on the Capitals, a portion of the Bruins fan base goes on and starts uh, fucking trending the N-word on, uh, on Twitter. And then, and then that just opens to shitstorm. You know, it's fucking ugly and all that type of stuff. And it really ruins... It's such a pussy fucking move. You know what I mean? It's such a fucking... It's such a pussy fuck. And I, I don't even get it in 2014 to do something like that. And uh, almost equally annoying is then when people on Twitter start doing that real classy Boston when they send that. Like, that's like this hacky thing to say. Way to stay classy. Like, who started that and why does everybody say that now? And you only use class when you're talking about, like, a sports team now. Did that come from Ron Burgundy, Stay Classy, San Diego? I don't know what it is, but I don't understand why people on Twitter can't express their views without using, like, I don't know, like Twitter language. Why, why, can't, you just, why can't you just say that, you know, that was fucked up, Boston? Why, you know, way to stay classy, or is that like that trending thing? I don't know what these fucking kids are doing, but here's the deal. For all you holier-than-thou cunts that tried to make racism a Boston thing, and I'm not, I can't defend Boston, nor will I. It is an overtly racist, yet liberal, fucking bizarre place. Like, I think the reason why it's so democratic is because so many people in Boston want to get a fucking state job so they don't have to work. I mean, that was a lot of my friends. I want to get on the dole. I want to lean on a fucking shovel. You know, get the benefits, dude, you know? The fuck? Um, there's a lot of that going there, yet it's still just fucking overtly racist. But having said that, all you people that fucking wrote like Boston was the worst fucking city ever, um, and also believe that racism is in the South and in Boston, um, become a comedian and travel the road 
And uh, tell me what you think, because that has not been in my experience. And I'm not going to fucking be a douche now and name a bunch of towns or countries that I've been to. But I got to tell you that, uh, I don't know, it's weird. It's on one level where I think we've progressed a long way as far as maybe in the media. Um, it's not as bad, and I, but I sometimes I just think that people just know what not to say now. But uh, on another level, I think, uh, you know, if the dollar collapsed, another Hitler could come along and fucking crush it. No problem. There would, there would be enough. There would definitely be enough uh, people signing up for that at that point so they could get their chicken noodle soup and get a nice fucking outfit. You know, and, and take out whoever the fuck he's supposed to take out. I basically, that's what I have. I have after traveling all that I've traveled. I have no faith in humanity. <laughs> ah, that's such a terrible thing to say, but it's true. It's awful. It's fucking awful. And you know what? PK's brother actually plays for the minor league Bruins. I don't know his name. He plays goal. And uh, so now this kid has to put on the fucking jersey of a fan base that not only said it, the most offensive word to his race, but called his brother that. I mean, it's just fucking, I just wish, you know something? I don't want, like, uh, Big Brother or anything like that. The only time I'm pro Big Brother is I really wish that when you wrote shit like that, that all of a sudden, like, one of those police helicopters would just be circling your fucking house, and then you had to go to work the next day, hanging your head in shame, because it's such a pussy fucking thing to do. Um, and unfortunate, and it takes away from this this amazing series, the Bruins versus the Canadians, which is going to go seven games. And uh, already there's a bunch of great storylines going on in it, and the Canadians have a great fucking team. So do the Bruins. I feel like the Canadians are on the way up, and we're getting a little bit old, yet we have this young defense. I got to tell you, dude, I'm fucking loving Dougie Hamilton. You know? Just in because he's young, he shoots the puck all the time. I feel, and he's coming down offensively. And like, um, I don't know. Whenever you get like an older defenseman, it just seems they never shoot the puck. They always do the smart play, and uh, you sit there like blowing out your fucking voice box, screaming at the TV, going, "Shoot the fucking thing! Just shoot it!" Right? And I know they know the game way more than me. But uh, that doesn't stop me from shoot the fucking thing, screaming. You never have to yell that at Dougie Hamilton. It's great. He just shoots it. Krug's the same way. Fucking phenomenal. By the way, I absolutely loved Johnny Boychuk. Boychuk. Johnny Boychuk's celebration when he fucking blasted that one in from the uh, the blue line, the fucking howitzer shot. And when he put his hands up in the air, I swear to God, he did his own version of the Frank the Tank. Remember Frank the Tank in old school? When he started fucking doing the thing like he was an anti-aircraft gun? He did his a little slower. So I think his, he was doing more six shooters. But that's got to be the fucking greatest feeling ever. In the NHL, you're a defenseman. You can skate 90 miles an hour backwards. And then you bring it into the offensive zone. And you just, from the blue line, a fucking bomb. Goes right through everybody, right into the back of the net. That's got to be the greatest fucking feeling ever. So whatever. So the first one, uh, the next game is going to be in Montreal. And um, game three is always a fucking crucial one in the seven-game series. Um, I think if the Bruins win it, we're definitely going to win the series. I would say we'll definitely win the fucking series. If we lose that game, it's it's going to be an uphill battle. I still think we can do it just because we have enough guys who are experienced. Um, but I don't know. That game three is a motherfucker. Uh, oh, and by the way, look at the Blackhawks. All right, they now they what they've won six in a row. Those motherfuckers are going to win it all again. And I think that we can get to the finals. And I'm worried that it's going to be the same problem that we ran into last year, which was. They were just too deep. They just had too many fucking guys. You know, Patrick Kane, Hosa, Jonathan Taves, and then you got their great defense, you know, Duncan Keith, Seabrook, and all those guys. It's just they're just too fucking, you know, you like you just don't get time off, man. It's fucking, 
they are still they're still the team to beat, and I I think that they can. Uh, I mean, they win it again this year. That's 2010, 2000, no, wait, was it 2010? Then we won it in 11. Who won 2012? They won it last year, obviously. Oh, the Kings. Oh, so that wouldn't be a dynasty because they they would won three in five years. They'll give you three out of four. They'll call it a dynasty. Back in the day, you had to win three years in a row to be a dynasty. Um, But either way, three in five years would be the shit. So, I, I mean, my money's on them to win it all. I just don't see, um, you know, barring injury, I just don't see anybody stopping them. I hate to say it. I mean, I'm obviously, my heart, my brain tells me that. My heart's for the Bruins, though. But uh, it's been amazing. And um, I've been kind of watching a little bit of the NBA playoffs. They look like they're fucking great, too. But I just I just don't watch the shit. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick one or the other. Dude, I got to tell you right now, if you're watching... All the NHL and all the NBA playoffs, you have no fucking life. There's no, especially the first round. Jesus Christ. You going to fucking watch 16 playoff series or whatever the hell it is? There's no way you can do it. Hey, Bill, we're not arguing with you. Fucking relax. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. Let's uh, let's read a little bit of advertising here. How far into this thing are we? I feel like I'm run. Oh, Jesus. Fucking half hour already. All right. All right, Sherry's Berries, everybody. Here's the theme. Treat mom to some Sherry's Berries. Our good friends at Sherry's Berries, they're back. Order giant freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries starting at $19.99 over a 40% savings. Or double the berries for just $10 more. Go to berries.com, click on the mic in the upper right-hand corner, and enter my code BURR, B-U-R-R, when you order. i got to tell you, a bunch of people have ordered these off of my uh, podcast because of my uh, my silly reads. And there's not one person who hasn't said that they're not fucking absolutely delicious. So there you go. I'm going to continue. After all, your mom kept you alive and fed you for years. Go to berries.com and get your mom freshly dipped berries for nineteen ninety nine, when you enter my code Burr, B-U-R-R, make your mom proud with this sweetness. Enormous, fresh, juicy, mouth-watering berries, white milk and dark chocolate-covered goodness, topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, or nuts. Order your mom some Sherry's Berries today. Go to berries.com and enter the code Burr, B-U-R-R, and show your brothers and sisters why you are mom's favorite child. This deal expires Friday at midnight, so make sure you order now. All right. Okay. Pro Flowers. Mother's Day is this week. Here you go. Here's the you're the yin and the yang. Uh, you can get her some chocolate uh, strawberries, and now you can get her some flowers, and your mom's going to love you. Mother's Day is this week. It's on May 11th. That's Sunday, everybody. Your mom did carry you around for nine months and dealt with all your mess until you left her house. Give the woman some flowers, for God's sakes. Order a beautiful 100 Blooms bouquet or bouquet, however the hell you say it, plus a free glass vase from ploflowers.com for just $19.99. Upgrade to 100 Blooms with a pink vase and chocolates for just $9.99 more. For uh, Your listeners can get this special Mother's Day offer using your code BURR, B-U-R-R. Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last a full week or you get your money back. The only way to get this amazing Mother's Day deal is to go to proflowers.com, click on the blue mic uh, at the top of the right-hand corner and type in BURR, B-U-R-R. That's um, proflowers.com. Click the blue mic and type in BURR, B-U-R-R. This deal also expires Friday at midnight. Make sure you order today. You, You kids, you got it easy. Back in the day, we had to go out and go buy flowers. We had to go out and go pick some chocolates out. Now what do you do? You just sit there and you just make a couple of clicks and it's all done. You can get on with your life. You can get on to getting shit-faced tonight. Celebrating Cinco de Mayo. I told you years ago I asked uh, what date is Cinco de Mayo. And for other people as white as me, Cinco de Mayo literally means the 5th of May. Oh, Jesus. All right, e-voice. You're a business owner. But automated phone systems and secretaries are not in your budget just yet. And juggling incoming calls yourself makes it very makes it very hard to look like a professional. Who's kidding who? Here's something that will dramatically help you make more money in 2014. What is it? It's e-voice, everybody. 
whether you're a business of one or 100, eVoice will help you manage all of your incoming calls. With a toll-free number, dial-by-name directory, and call routing tools, your business will sound like a million bucks. Can't take a call? No problem. eVoice will transcribe the voicemail and email it to you. Never be caught off guard again. And with eVoice, you can try it before you buy it. Right now, just for my listeners, you can get a free 60-day trial. Uh, go to evoice.com and enter promo code BILL, B-I-L-L, at checkout. Take charge of your business and make more money in 2014. Go to evoice.com and enter BILL at checkout for your 60-day free trial. That's evoice.com, promo code BILL. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. I'll read the, the last three a little bit later. Okay. Now, let's continue on. Um, I did something very un redheadish yesterday. I actually went to the beach. Um, not because I wanted to. My wife wanted to go. And uh, I got to tell you, I don't like the beach. All right? It's fucking dirty and it's too hot. I'm not built for it. You know, people just stare at me. Like, look at it. Is it going to take its shirt off? <laughs> or at least I feel like they are. You know? I go out there and it's just, it's a shit show. It's a fucking shit show. But uh, I love my wife, so I took her. And she has a great time soaking up the sun. She absolutely loves it. And it's just one of those things I have to deal with. You know what's funny? We were at a, a mall because I had to buy some sunglasses because this fucking dickhead bus boy stole my sunglasses. I got this nice pair of sunglasses. I did this acting gig, right? And in the end, they got everybody something. Got a really nice pair of sunglasses that actually looked really good on my fat fucking head. And uh, I went into a vegan restaurant, everybody. Vegan fucking restaurant. My favorite vegan restaurant in Los Angeles. Could I sound more pretentious? I'm bitching about sunglasses that I got for free for working and acting in a movie. And now I'm going to a vegan restaurant. And now I'm going to bitch because the busboy stole them. And yeah, I am. That's how out of touch I am. You know what? Fuck that douche. I, I was a busboy, and I didn't steal shit. I fucking set him down. I walked out, and I, the time it took me to walk to my car, I said, oh, fuck, and I turned back, and my table was clear. And they had already sat down two other fucking emaciated fucks, you know, to eat some brown rice and beans. And uh, I go, I left my sunglasses, and they're like, hey, we can't, uh, hey, yeah. I go, the busboy cleared up the table, ask him. And he's just like, yay. He said he didn't see him. And then I was just like, yeah, oh, really? So I'm not going to get him back, basically? Basically saying that he fucking swiped him. And then she's just like, no, like they, people have found iPads. And they, they yeah, because it's fucking big. It's a fucking iPad. Ah, oh, it pisses me off. You know something? I don't mind losing a pair of sunglasses in a steakhouse, you know, to use stereotypes. You, you expect somebody to do that. But in a fucking vegan restaurant... Isn't it supposed to be all like, hey, man, like, namaste, you know, happy Tuesday, man. This is the only Tuesday in May, is gonna, man, right? That's supposed to be that vibe. I just kept picturing some douche out at a party wearing those fucking glasses, you know? And I had all these fucking Jason Statham fantasies of how I action hero my way into getting my fucking sunglasses back. Except I have such a temper, even in my fucking fantasies, I still punched him in the face, threw my glasses, and broke him. Huh? You want him? There they are! <laughs> Stuck in your fucking head. Ah, that pissed me off. So anyway, so, uh, so we go out to the beach, and we're out. There's this mall in Malibu, right? And it's just like the trophy wife fucking, it's, it's unreal. It's unreal. Like they're walking around and, and trophy wife, you know, a trophy wife because she's, you know, she's still trying to look hot, like well into her fifties. She has kids. It's like, you did it. You're married. Yeah. You, ha you have kids. Why are you still trying to look fuckable? Just look like a mom. It's great. Comfortable clothes. Give into it. But the thing is, is they don't have, they don't have like, uh, I think that they know that the second they let it slide you know, that, that they're going to get traded in or something. I don't know what it is. They all look least to me, you know? So anyway, so I went over there and bought a pair of fucking sunglasses. Then I went to the goddamn beach, kept my T-shirt on the whole fucking time. 
I just sat there putting on Sunblock 50. Oh, Nia also said, you know, should we get an umbrella? You want to get an umbrella so, like, you can, like, sit in the shade? And I was like, no, I don't want it because I don't want to seem even, like, more of a freak. Um, and then when I got there, there was a bunch of people with fucking umbrellas who actually had pigment. And then I felt like an asshole. And uh, I don't know. I ended up just walking down along the water. The water was fucking ice cold. And uh, even when I get like knee deep in the ocean, I just think like, you know, what if there's a fucking shark and just swims by and sees my white calf and it looks like a fucking drumstick? Like, why would you go in this goddamn thing? I, I, I literally don't fucking understand it on it. Like, I guess I do. Because people surf every day. Like, the amount of people that surf their whole life and they never get bit by a shark. But this is the funny thing. They, uh, there's not a surfer I've ever met that hasn't seen one. I talked to someone in Hawaii, right? And they were going like, uh, I go, D- don't, don't you wait nervous about sharks? They're like, well, I mean, you know, you try not to think about it. And I go, have you ever seen one? And she was just like, well, yeah, I just kind of lie to myself and say it's a porpoise. That maybe it's a porpoise. Like you just see something big swim underneath you and you just fucking don't look at it. Like the way you don't look at a psycho on a subway train or whatever. I don't know. I, I, I really, I honestly do not have the fucking balls for that. So, um, anyways. Oh, guess what I rented this week? I rented a Chevy Spark. Um, um, we're finally getting the downstairs fixed after all the water damage. You know, because this fucking house is the money pit. And uh, so we're getting that shit fixed downstairs. So I have my car, my truck in the garage. And they got to bring all the shit in through the garage. So I had to, you know, I didn't want to leave my truck out on the street because I was afraid it was going to get stolen. So I uh, had to put that in fucking storage. And Nia's working and shit. So now I had to go rent a car. So they said, what do you want? I said, let me get a mid-sized car. Whatever. Fucking sedan. Perfect. So I show up down there. And they did the classic, like, Griswold move to me where they bring out the family truckster and they basically like, well, you're, the Camry or whatever the fuck is still being washed or Corolla is what it was. But this one's already ready. And I was late. I had to get the fuck out of there. I already hated being there. So I say, yeah, fuck it. I'll take that little fucking car. Dude, it is the worst hunk of shit. You know, I don't, I don't get mad at cars for being what they are. If you're a little car and you're a great little car, I actually fucking love them. Like, I like, you know, VW Bugs and that type of shit. But this thing is so fucking underpowered. Just with one person in the car, if I put the AC on, it is literally screaming at, like, I swear to God, like 4,000 RPMs going up, like, the littlest incline. But I got to tell you, having watched every episode of Fast and Loud, that would be a fucking hilarious car to redo. A Chevy Spark, if you somehow yank that engine out, and you could turbocharge a, maybe you could get a six in there and just put a fucking hearse shifter in there. I bet you could tip that fucking thing over. <laughs> and there would no, no way would that car not be one of the most fun cars you would ever drive because it would be like driving this fucking, this turbocharged golf cart. That's all I keep thinking about that car. I just keep thinking of the potential of that thing. And that is the fucking disease of watching and the great thing about watching those car shows is rather than just accepting your car for what it is, you start getting fucking ideas like, oh, what if I did this? What if I did that? Um, that's why I wanted somebody to paint my file cabinet, which, by the way, I never even gave into. I finally just looked at it, and I just hated the file cabinet so bad, I just I gave it away to somebody. So it was a complete fucking loss. So any of you guys who've been asking me for pictures about my custom painted file cabinet. I ended up just giving it away and I felt great. I felt like a weight was taken off my chest. There was just something about it that was just so fucking depressing to look at. Um, I don't want a fucking file cabinet. That's one of the worst sounds ever. The opening and closing of a fucking file cabinet. Have you ever heard that sound and been where you wanted to be? You know? It's just an awful sound. I remember that sound when I got my license back from drinking and driving. And he opened it and fucking closed it. And he, as he was handing me the fucking license back, this statey, 
right as I went to grab it, he pulled it back away and he goes, wait, was it, was it for 45 days or for 90? And just gave me that last little fucking heart attack. Um, just to be a dick in a good way to teach me a fucking lesson. Um, I oh, was speaking of that. Somebody told me on, on, uh, Twitter to watch this thing on, uh, on Netflix, on Green Berets. I don't even know if I rented the right one. There's a couple of them. The one that I rented was, uh, I don't know, some 11 weeks of hell or something. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find this shit. Oh, sorry. 11 weeks. Two weeks. Do you know why I said 11? Because of the two L's in hell. I swear to God, the way my brain works, I, this is the only fucking job I could ever do. So there's a couple. There's one, National Degree of Geographic, Special Forces, whatever. This two weeks in hell, I was watching this thing. They just showed the first couple of fucking days. I can tell you right now, there's no fucking way I could ever be a Green Beret. You lie to yourself, having never been in the military, that I could do that. You know, I put my fucking head down. No fucking way. Go on Netflix and check that out. That's my YouTube video of the week, except it's on Netflix. Watch Two Weeks of Hell. I've only watched the first episode. Dude, it's just fucking insane. The first day you're there, they have a thousand pound log that 12 guys grab. And you're just sitting there bending over at the waist as you're holding it like you're going to do curls. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Like my lower back, just that would be it. I would never walk right again. And then they have it on your shoulder and you got to pick it up over your head and then down. And they're, and they're sitting there going, move the log around your head, not your head around the log. Number 167, what is your problem? They're fucking going off on them. And uh, you do that for like a fucking hour. Then they just have you rolling on the ground from one side of the pit to the other. And if you're too slow, other people roll over you. And it's supposed to make you dizzy and disoriented. And when you puke, you have to get up and run out of the pit. There's no puking in the pit, but they know you're going to puke. So you have to run out of the pit and puke. If you puke in the pit... You have to pick the puke up and put it in your pockets and then get back on the ground and start rolling again. And even the people who are dropping like flies, I got to commend them for even lasting an hour of that shit. You got to see it. All right. If you think you're working out doing your insanity workout, go fuck yourself and watch this thing. It's the sick. I, and I, now I'm just on the second episode where they're just showing the teamwork. Oh, my God, dude, they had one thing. They, they're in the middle of North Carolina, and they call this thing like the star, where you have these five points that make a star that you have to find using navigation, and you can't use your light, and you can't go on the roads, and you're just walking through the fucking forest. And when you come upon a river or a pond, you have to walk through the fucking thing. You can't go on a road. And they bust all, you can't sleep. They bust, and they got these guys with these infrared goggles, like Rambo hiding and catching all of these guys when they cheat and then you're out of the fucking program. Um, it's just like, I don't think I could go more than 18 seconds watching this thing without going, I'd quit there. I'd quit there. I would fail that. The only thing I thought I'd be halfway decent on is the, uh, the obstacle course because uh, I do pull-ups and climb a rope. But even then, I do pull-ups and climb a rope after eight hours sleep. And I had a nice bowl of oatmeal, you know. My wife gives me a kiss on the cheek and then I go down there. And I do as, I go and, you know, I do as many as I can until it starts to hurt. Ooh, that hurts. And then I stop. (laughs) Ah, Jesus. I thought I was way closer to being a Green Beret than I actually am. I thought I was only... You know, one million miles away from it. I didn't realize I was light years away. So uh, anybody listen to this, if you ever even attempted to become one, if or if you are one or whatever, you, if you have any fucking personal stories that you could send in about attempting that, uh, I don't know, the level of pain, whatever, what it's like to scoop up puke and put it in your fucking pockets. I mean, Jesus Christ. You know what's funny is those, you know, when you join a frat, uh, they go, hey, they have hell week and all that type of shit. Like anybody who's a Green Beret should be an honorary member member of every fraternity in the country. Because I know that those fucking, why can't I remember how long it is? I want to say two weeks. 
It is two weeks. I keep thinking 11. That right there. Dude, look at that. I am already fucked in the head before they actually deprive me of sleep. They asked this one guy, they go, how long you been in here? And he said, hash browns. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the thing. He didn't take a headshot. It's not like a football player. They just had him pick a log up for a fucking hour and roll around on the ground. And they asked him, they asked him something like that. Like, how you feeling? And he said, hash browns. So, I don't know. Jesus Christ, if that doesn't make you want to watch it, I don't know what will. All right, let's get on to the um, the questions for the week. Uh, all right, uh, no bends in Israel. Oh, Jesus, did I make an ass of myself last week? Somebody sent me a letter last week. Um, and the guy said, hi, my name is Ben, and I'm from Israel. And I said, dude, there's no fucking Bens in Israel. Like, I thought that was more of an American name. And I've met a bunch of people from Israel, and they always have these crazy fucking names. Most of them begin with a Y, you know? You know, like these badass, like, I know Israeli martial arts, Mossad kind of fucking names, right? I never heard of Ben. Hey, my name's uh, Skippy. That just sounded like a regular fucking name to me. So anyways, and I got corrected brutally in this fucking email here. Bill, you said on your 42814 podcast that no one from Israel is named Ben. Dude, their prime minister is named Benjamin Netanyahu. <laughs> their fucking president, basically, is named Benjamin. Well, I probably didn't hear it because they always say his whole name, Benjamin Netanyahu. You know, like you ever think of how many sports guys have really fucking awful names, but you never notice it until they just say their first name. But you, if you hear the, the whole name, I can't think of a name, but there's a couple of people that just have really fucking awful goddamn names. Let me think. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll think of one. I won't think of one. I'll walk around and all of a sudden it'll just pop in my head. Maybe I'll bring it up next week. But yeah. All right. So you got me. Number two, solid info, Bill. Except Ben is a, a name of Hebrew origin. It means son of the south or son of the right hand. Hold yourself a press conference. I don't know what that means. Um, all I know is that's an unbelievably arrogant name to name your kid. Son of the right hand, I'm assuming of God. Jesus Christ, way to give the kid a complex the second he comes out of the womb. He's got to live up to that name. Why don't you go Native American? You know? Like he who sits with the hawks. Then all you got to do is hang out with some fucking birds and your dad loves you. Um, number three, how about Ben Stiller, you blockhead? What about him? I'm going to Google him right now. Why are you acting like that guy's from, is he from Israel? Oh, Jesus, am I making another fucking moron? I thought he was from New York. Ben Stiller. Born in Brooklyn the fuck i mean i know i'm german and irish my name isn't wolfgang you know i have i have bill i guess that's probably an english name i don't fucking know you know go f you know something this is what i don't like about this shit is listen look at the way this dude calls me out he can't just say hey you made a fucking honest mistake right he goes bill i know you're gonna get a ton of me emails about this ben thing because you're wrong as fuck great debating skills now, do you have a counter argument? Yeah, this guy's wrong as fuck. Um, anyways, he goes, Bill, Bill, but I know you're going to admit you're wrong because that's what you do best. You're always ready to admit when you're wrong, and that, my friend, means you're a trustworthy person. Oh, here he is. Look at him now. Now that he fucking called me a moron, here he is. He's bringing me back into this, this fucking uh, sadistic relationship. I'm sorry, baby. I, I shouldn't have said those things about you. Come on, let me, let me go buy you a burger. Um, anyways, he says a true sign of honesty. Uh, no, sir, it isn't. It is. Just because somebody's honest on a podcast doesn't mean they fucking walk around doing trust. I'm a complete piece of shit, but I appreciate it. Um, anyways, read this email after the others and realize I could be a great publicist if you need one. I'll be the Benicio Del Toro to your Johnny Depp like in Fear and Loathing. I'll be a bit of a mess, you know, some drugs, and I don't know where this guy's going with this shit. Um, all right. Probiotics. Thank you for letting me know, sir. Benjamin Netanyahu. I never noticed his first name was Ben. There's just so many syllables and letters. 
Like, that's a name, like, you know when somebody drives by in a car and they try to yell some at you and you just hear, that's like what that guy's name is, Benjamin Netanyahu. How the fuck am I supposed to even notice Ben? If you get to Jamin Netanyahu, it's fucking gone. Like the Ben part, it's like being part of part of a large family, trying to get your story in at the dinner table. I was kidding who I fucked up, all right? I have to be honest with you, like, I, I forget Obama's first name. A lot of the times because I don't pay attention to politics. And uh, it's always like Obamacare. Oh, you know, that's what, was just what you get for voting for Obama. Are you surprised Obama a lot? They just keep saying Obama, Obama, Obama. Nobody ever says his first fucking name. I guess they always say Clinton. They said Bush. I don't know. I had to sit there and think, what the fuck is this guy's first name? That's how out of it I am. So if I don't even know my president's first name, Barack, or I got to think about it, how the fuck am I going to know Benjamin Netanyahu? I can't stand looking at that part of the fucking world anyways. That's such a shit show over there. And the way that whole thing was fucking handled to right a wrong with another wrong, and then the wrong becomes the, 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 the so-called right become the wrong. It's just the whole fucking thing is absolutely ridiculous. They should just take everybody out of there. Palestinians and Jews, and you just fucking, I don't know, push the whole thing into the ocean. And just, why don't you guys all go, go live in a place where you just just look at it like, oh, I like this street, you know, rather than tying all that stupid fucking religious horseshit into that part of the world. Now, this is where God, uh, Jesus used the porta potty. And he says, I love everybody, but I love you guys best. Or whatever the fuck it is. Everybody's the chosen one, you bunch of fucking babies. That's the dumbest shit ever. Yeah, I'll probably get a bunch of emails on that, but I, I really feel that. Like, I swear to God, if I was part of either one of those groups, I would just be like, oh, you know what? I'm fucking, I'm going to move to Rhode Island. I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Fuck this. You want it? It's yours. Go ahead. Gives a fuck. Sit there dealing with this Hatfield and McCoy shit for the rest of my goddamn life. I want to go. I want to go ride a boogie board. <laughs> I want to take a cooking class. I don't want to fucking deal with this shit. You know, I don't know. It's like I got burned out on that Yankees Red Sox shit after a while. After a while, you just like yeah. And I did reduce it to that. It's fucking childish. There you go. The guy who didn't know that Benjamin was an Israeli's name, is telling that entire part of the world to grow up after the fan base of the team he loves dropped the N-word this week. How's that? You like that? How's that for you? Is that a nice big bowl of hypocrisy for you? Well, get used to it. Um, oh, by the way, last night I came home, and I was an absolute fucking saint. My wife was sitting down, and she was watching that guy there um, who, who basically... He has all the real housewives get on the show, and then he just stokes the flames to get them arguing. And it was the the Nene Leaks group of people. And I sat there and didn't say a fucking word. And it might have been some of the meanest, most horrific shit um, I, I've ever heard people say to each other. And they all just looked tired. They just look spent. They had these ugly fucking looks on their faces, and they were just saying all of this hurtful shit to each other. And I didn't say a fucking word. I usually go, how can you watch this shit? You know, I thought you were a feminist. How can you watch this shit? This is like depicting women like they can't even get along for five seconds. And uh, I didn't say shit last night. And actually, Nia came in afterwards and was like, I had to shut that off. I actually... I had a physical reaction to trying to watch it. This is some of the meanest shit I've ever heard anybody say to each other. And uh, I think I'm done with that show. So there's one for the guys out there. Just stop complaining. Just sit there in silence. If you just sit there in silence and let those women's voices, you know, I shouldn't even say those women, just say those people because I'm not trying to make it a female thing. I, one of them said, to the other one, I mean, dude, it was like, it was be it, on a roast, it would have got groans. This woman's trying to get pregnant, 
using a sperm donor. And this woman was saying, like, you have to do that because you don't have a man. So now some guy who wants $10 to go buy a pizza is now going to go jerk off into a cup. And you don't know if you're going to have a serial killer or a child molester for a baby because you don't have a man. And then she said something sassy after that, like, uh, you know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not up on sass. You know, put that in your checkbook and fucking cash it or whatever the fuck. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck she said. But it was, it was just like, and you just saw the fucking hurt on the other woman's face. Like she almost, and then another woman who also doesn't like that woman, like laughed. It was fucking, <laughs> it was fucking brutal. It, I mean, I mean, the fucking comedians that I've hung out with, from Patrice O'Neill, Rest His Soul, to Keith Robinson, those two alone, and Rich Voss, like some of this shit that they said, like, this like paled in comparison. Jesus fucking Christ, it was brutal, but I didn't say a fucking word. I don't know, I, I was in the zone, I didn't say anything, I just sat there. And I was looking at a drum magazine and I was occasionally look up and I didn't say a fucking word. And then finally, everything that I wanted her to think about the show finally happened. I think because I finally shut the fuck up and she could actually listen to it. Or maybe they truly just went way too far. Um, she said she was done with that show. So now I have this hope that if I just shut the fuck up during all of these reality shows where it's a bunch of fucking people, men and women just yelling at each other that she'll finally stop watching them and then start watching sports. I know that's not going to happen, but I can, I can fucking dream, right? I can have a dream. All right. You know what my dream is right now is to read these next three ads without making too many fucking mistakes. Okay. All right. Dollar Shave Club, everybody. Nothing feels better. Then that first shave with a fresh blade, right? It's smooth, it's close, and the blade is as sharp as it's ever going to be. It feels absolutely fantastic. But thanks to the big shaving company's ridiculous prices, you can't afford it to use a fresh blade every week. Or even if you can, the, 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 the sheer principle of having to overpay for that little piece of crap that they're acting like is a bar of gold. So what do you do? You drag that dull-ass blade across your face, face for two weeks, three weeks, ten weeks? Why do you do that to yourself? Maybe because the only thing more painful than shaving with an old blade is shelling out 30 bucks for a pack of new ones. If you want to enjoy a fresh blade every week, but you don't want to take out a second mortgage on your house, you got to join dollarshaveclub.com, dude. Uh, for just a couple bucks a month, dollarshaveclub.com ships me the highest quality blades you can get. I'm a four-blade guy. That's not true. I like the three. Or the two if they still made it, but I'll take the three. And with Dollar Shave Club, it's only six bucks for a four-pack. Seriously, only six bucks for the best quality blades you can get. So every week I can pop in a fresh blade and treat myself to, ama to an amazing shave. And it's great for your skin. Join dollarshaveclub.com, get amazing quality blades in the mail for a couple bucks and treat yourself to a brand new blade every week. Hundreds of thousands of guys with, um, now that's a typo. Hundreds of thousands of guys with have upgraded their shaving I think we don't need the width. Hundreds of thousands of guys have upgraded their shaving with dollarshaveclub.com, and I am one of them, and I'm loving it. So now it's your turn. Shave time, shave money with dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. Enjoy a nice, smooth shave today. All right. LegalZoom.com. Hey, you know, I'm actually on, on the side here because I, I looked up Ben Stiller. He's actually getting much better looking with age. You know, unless these are just bad pictures of him when he was younger. Oh, Jesus, do I have a crush on him? Oh, Jesus. Uh, LegalZoom. <laughs> LegalZoom, uh, LegalZoom, everybody. Modern technology is great. Smartphones, iPads, and other gadgets make it easy to do so many things. But why is it that our lives seem busier at the same time? Because you have to download the new system. Is that what it is? I don't know. Anyways, well, when it comes to getting the legal help you need, LegalZoom provides a great solution that works with your busy schedule. Let's face it, the legal system is complicated. There are better things you can do with your time. Thankfully, LegalZoom is there for you. So if you're thinking about setting, uh, starting a business, forming an LLC, or getting a trademark, will or living trust, LegalZoom gets the job done right. You'll get the personal attention you need, 
and they'll help you take care of the details. Uh, and they'll help you take care of the details. LegalZoom has been helping families and small businesses, small business owners for 14 years, and they received an A plus from the Better Business Bureau. Call or visit LegalZoom today for an ex- extra discount. Enter Burr B U R R in the referral box at checkout. That's LegalZoom.com. Discount code Burr B U R R. LegalZoom provides legal help through independent attorneys and self-help services, but it is not a law firm. Go to LegalZoom.com. Enter in the dis- enter the discount code Burr B U R R. And lastly, but not leastly, Stamps.com. Everyone, making trips to the post office is becoming a thing of the past. You just don't need to do it anymore. Thanks to Stamps.com. You already know that going to the post office is inconvenient. Driving there, finding parking, waiting in line, yada, yada, yada. But you probably didn't know you're paying more for postage than you have to. Stamps.com is the better way. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, right from your computer and your printer. Then just hand it to the mailman. With Stamps.com, you'll get special special postage discounts you can't get at the post office on first-class priority mail, international, and more. Never go to the post office again. Right now, use my last name, Burr, B-U-R-R, for this special offer. No risk trial, plus a $110 bonus offer. It includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Burr, B-U-R-R, that's Stamps.com, enter Burr. Bam, there you go. All right. Let's get to the next uh, The next. Email of the week. Probiotics. One. This guy, has got, he's got it all broken down here. Number one. Hey, Bill, just to let you know, you don't have to take yogurt to get your probiotics in. You can just take uh, acidophilus. Acidophilus. I don't know. It's a pill that has billions of cultures of probiotics. It's really fantastic. I take it all the time. Um, what's the side effect? That's what I want to know. I always get nervous with taking pills. Like they're, you know, they're doing great for my gut, but they're kicking the shit out of my liver. All right, just for the fun of it, let's look, let's look at, let's do a little conspiracy research here. All right. Ace acid. Come on, Bill, you can do it. The word is right in front of you. Acid. Oh, side effects. Let's see what comes up. Do, 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 do. You know, Merv Griffin gets paid every time they play that fucking song, or his dead body does. Um, this part it contains the bacteria, yuppa yuppa yuppa, which is naturally found in the stomach. Do, 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 do. Some conditions, such as an antibiotic use, can cause problems with the normal balance of bacteria, resulting in diarrhea. This part it can help restore the normal balance. The product has been used for vaginal, urinary tract infections. Some diet supplement products have been forced to contain, wait a minute, some diet supplement products have been forced to contain possibly harmful impurities additives. Check with your pharmacist for more details regarding the particular brand you use. Also, it's pretty much straight up. You just got to make sure you don't get a bad one. The FDA has not reviewed this product for safety or effectiveness. Consult your pharmacist for more details. Well, there you go, sir. Wait, when was this written? May 5th, 2014. Now, this is the thing. Is there some other company just putting this out because they have another pill, so they're, they're just writing bad shit? Like the people who made Jeeps said the Suzuki Samurai tipped over when it didn't because they wanted to sell more Jeeps? How do you know who to believe? I'm at medicine.net. That's pretty fucking... I don't know. I don't know. That just seems. Does that seem like that's... Doctor.com? I don't know. That sounds kind of fucking generic. I don't know. Whatever. All right, so he's saying it's fantastic. What do I know? What does he know? What does anybody know? I don't know. I'm going to keep fucking reading. Number two. Uh, kefir or kefir, K-E-F-I-R, is like normal yogurt, but has many more strains of good bacteria in it like those pills you were looking at. I drink it in the morning, <clears throat> in the morning to respect my stomach after a night of boozing. It's at all the grocery stores. All right. Well, fuck it. <clears throat> I'll try that. See how I feel. Um, thank you for the information. Um, somebody was also saying that, that Stony Brook yogurt is uh, all natural. Stony Field. Stony Field yogurt. I just got to find out where to get it because um, I'm trying to get in shape for my uh, my damn special coming up. Uh, also, by the way, tickets going on sale for my special. Uh, 
will be in the next week. I'll have more information. Um, sorry, I have an Asian band. Doesn't that sound like an Asian karate movie? To first learn the way, you must walk the way. Um, all right, I get it. Don't you know I'm not going to fucking pick it up after this? Fucking 15 rings. All right, thanks for no music. That's funny. Thanks for no music. And there, there was some music right there. Thanks for no music. Billy Boy, I'm so fucking glad that your podcast doesn't start with music. Now that I said that, the next one probably will. I don't enjoy it when podcasts try to go pro and slick it all up to look real or legit. Fuck that. Just shut up and talk, I say. All right, well, I'm not doing that because I'm trying to be a purist. It's just I, I got into this business because I didn't want to have a job. So I don't edit these. I just sit down. I talk. For the most part, I don't have guests. Although I, I did a special one uh, last week. Uh, I did an extra one with uh, I had director Stephen Brill of the movie Walk of Shame that I have. Oh, Jesus. Now that you have passed the first test, it is now time to start your log training. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That just sounds like the music in every fucking awesome karate movie that you watch. And it makes you want to get in shape and start punching wood. Then you realize it hurts, so you quit. Um, all right. Oh, yeah, so I had Stephen Brill come in, and he was talking about the movie I got to do last year with uh, Ethan Souple and uh, Elizabeth Banks. Um, and it uh, came out, and uh, people said a bunch of nice stuff. I guess they liked the work that I did it. They said I was funny, thank God, and I appreciate that. So uh, if you get a chance and you got some money to spend, uh, check out Walk of Shame. And if you don't want to go to the movies because you have a great your own entertainment system, you can actually download it off of iTunes immediately. It's the new way they're going to do movies, which I think is brilliant. It makes me want to upgrade my system at home. It's fucking perfect. Download. It's like six bucks or something like that. Cost you less money. You don't have to go anywhere. Pop it in. Support the podcast, my career, and the friends I worked with. Come on. Do me a solid. It's Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Watch Walk of Shame. All right, here's the next one. Balding at 19. Dear Bill Emoji. I don't know what that means. Did I say it right? Ah, you guys just, just tripped me up right and left this week. First, I'd like to apologize for my English. Dude, your fucking English is amazing already. I, don't, I can't say first, I'd like to apologize for my French. And I've been working on this shit for over a month. In Spanish, I, I can't even, I suck at it. Yo tengo pero. Pero, I say it right? Ah, fucking, I stink. First, I'd like to apologize uh, for my English since it's not my native language. I hope this won't give you difficulties reading out loud because that would really make the podcast lose its momentum. <laughs> You're being sarcastic. This happens every week. Um, anyway, I am a 19-year-old male, and I'm balding. For a long time, I hadn't noticed because I had longer hair. When I recently got my hair cut, I discovered my hair had started thinning a long time ago. How the fuck do I deal with this? Girls will often call me attractive, but I know I am not attractive in a very masculine way, so buzzing it would hardly make me feel like a badass. I probably have a dick-shaped skull hiding under my thinning mane anyways. Oh, anyways, so that would make me look extra ridiculous. Besides that, I feel like I'm at an age where my hair is still a big part of my identity. And losing it feels like, lo and losing it feels like losing it a way, oh, it feels like losing a way to express myself in some way. Losing hair at a young age like this feels like a one-way ticket to mediocrity always being one step behind the rest for the rest of my life. What's your advice on this? Since you don't exactly have your Axl Rose mane anymore either. <laughs> thanks for the podcast. I loved your show in Amsterdam. Oh, well, thanks for coming out. I loved going to Amsterdam. It was a privilege to come to your country and do my little fucking dance. Um, all right. Uh, your fucking feelings are natural. Especially at 19, when I first figured out I was losing my hair in my early 30s, I freaked the fuck out. I couldn't believe it. Like, how could this happen to me? I was like Nancy Kerrigan. I just sat down and going, why, why, <laughs> why? And then, uh, as I always do, I just fucking go, all right. This is the situation. I can either sit here and act like a fucking bitch 
or I can uh, try to find the positive. And I was just like, I, I, I always, this is what I always try to do. I just look for people who are in my situation or worse that succeeded. And that's who I think about. I immediately just looked at fucking guys like Ed Harris, Woody Harrelson. I'm like, they're still leads in movies and still crushing it and getting nominated for. So, you know, if I want to let it stop me, it will. Um, who gives a fuck? Uh, well, you got a whole bunch of options now. You know, you can either try and fight it or you can just say, fuck it, like I did. Um, you know, I just find just giving into I just find uh, giving into it is way fucking easier. It's just easier to say, all right, well, I guess I'm going to be that guy. I'll be the friend in the movie. I won't be the lead. So who gives a fuck? You know, you're still in the movie. I know you don't do that for a fucking living. Okay, first of all, I would say about as far as like buzzing your head, like you have no idea what your head looks like until you do it. And you might as well fucking do it. It's a fucking, it's great having a shaved head. Um, I would fucking just see what it looks like and maybe it looks cool. And then the, here's the deal. If you, if you bald young, this is how you catch up is if you keep, if you stay in shape because most people, um, I, it's an absolute shit show by the time they're 35. I mean, balding at 19, yeah, that's going to fucking suck. But this is the thing. Like, women really respect confidence. And if you carry yourself and you, you just make jokes about your fucking hairline, you have a sense of humor about it, like, there's something about it that, I don't know, women really respond to that. I mean, other guys will still break your balls or whatever, but, like, they just fucking respond to it because it's a great character trait that you're, you're, you have a sense of humor about it, you're, you're dealing with, you know, some form of adversity, you're not being a pussy and letting it drag you down. Like, oh my God. It's making me start to think that it's actually serious. I never get phone calls. If I ever host a late night, fucking I can read your mind. Shell, this is going to be the music. I'll look all mysterious and I'll have like eyeliner. Um, <laughs> yeah, your whole thing. Like, I feel like it's a one-way ticket to mediocrity. Uh, the one-way ticket to mediocrity is believing that you're on the road to a one-way ticket to mediocrity. Um, you know, fortunately, uh, women are way more forgiving of physical flaws than guys are. Um, so, dude, you're 19 years old. Uh, just stay in shape. And go out there and crush it. Talk shit. Fucking hit on women that are allegedly way out of your league. Just swing for the fucking fences. And do the same thing with as far as whatever dream you have. As far as the, your dream job. Just absolutely swing out of your fucking shoes every time you get in at bat. And, you know, honestly, dude, if your fucking hairline's going to stop you. I mean, Jesus Christ. Okay, you're better than that. You're better than that.